At first we had a look at the Lightwing 120mm high speed, then came the regular Lightwing 120s, and then the regular 140 followed shortly behind. And now, as the fourth iteration of the same damn video, and finally concluding the whole series, the Be Quiet Lightwing 140mm high speed. Although I have already said it exactly three times before, let's repeat the whole damn script again cause I like my reviews to be standalone pieces, however, for my own mental well-being it's going to be a straight copy paste, so if you have already watched one of the other Lightwing reviews, feel free to skip to this point in time in this video where all of this will be over and we will be concentrating on the benchmarks. Just like it was with the Lightwing 120s, those exist in two different versions, a high speed one and a not so much high speed one. And in case you haven't seen the dedicated review about the Lightwing 120s, there are way more differences than a simpler high speed adjective would suggest. But today it's going to be all about the high speed version, the quick version, the high static pressure version, the radiator version. This one comes with nine very thin and heavily bent wings which are optimized for static pressure, creating a fan that is definitely built for radiators or cases that come with heavy obstructions, thick air filters, noise cancellation filters, rock wool, asbestos, those kinds of good things. Getting back to the fan, there are some specs that we should take a look at. Ignoring the obvious 140mm form factor, those Lightwing's 140 high speed are spinning at up to 2200 rpm, while it's pushing 71 CFM at 2.3mm of H2O. You can get those in two different packages, either as a standalone fan or as a triple pack. In the standalone version you will get exactly what you would expect, the fan and a bunch of screws. For the triple pack however, you will not only get three of those, but you will also get a SATA powered RGB hub. Now I've said it during the Lightring High Speed review and all the other ones, this is a hub, it is not a controller, this is spreading a signal that you yourself provide over a 3 pin ARGB header, and it is spreading it to up to 6 of those. Although it's not bad to get one of them, I think Be Quiet did a really stupid investment here. You see, those fans are using a 4 pin PVM header, which is fine, I love PVM, PVM is superior to the 3 pin voltage controlled one. However, the RGB on those fans is coming over a 3 pin ARGB connection, which comes with a little splitter attached to it. So out of the box, you can hook each and every fan to the other one and create a chain of ARGB fans and connect the whole thing to one single ARGB header on your motherboard. The fan spinning PVM connection on the other hand, well good luck, uh, you don't even get a 50 cent splitter cable in the box. So although that RGB hub is a nice to have, it would have made so much more sense to have a PVM hub, that way you could A mount all of the RGB connections to a single header and you would mount all of the PVM connections to the hub and then to a single header. Why is it so hard to be logical? But quickly dialing back for a second, both cables are 500mm long, which is quite long considering today's average. Now we will get onto the eye candy part. Identically designed to the 120mm counterparts, the 140mm high speeds look gorgeous. Around the fan we have that slightly protruding RGB ring, which this time got two LEDs more, totaling them at 20. Of course, none of the RGBs are visible to the naked eye, as the milky semi-translucent ring dilutes the light hard enough. To make the fans look good from both sides, we also got the same type of rounded cutouts that are shining through the back of the fan, which overall just… I think they look beautiful. On the build quality side, I would actually describe those as being a tick better to the 120mm counterparts. We still got the really sturdy frame with all of the rubber screw holes and the Be Quiet logos and all of that good stuff, but just working with them I immediately noticed that the 140mm form factor definitely had a positive impact on these fans. Whereas most fans out there will start to feel you know, a, bit, a bit weak when they, they become bigger, the frame on those, it, it, it is just as, as strong. On here I could still slam in nails with it, it's, it's, um, the build quality is very very good. With that secret hammer feature covered, let's take a quick look at what's actually important, benchmarks. 
while letting the 140mm high-speed fan spin at their max rate at 2200 rpm, the result seems a bit off at first. Although the 44 degrees C above ambient is a pretty respectable result next to the Arctic P14 ARGB, it is still 2 degrees C behind the 120mm counterpart. However, everything can make sense if we dig deep enough. As it turns out, the 0.3 mm of H2O static pressure difference between the 120s and 140s have more impact than the 20 CFM that the 140s can provide. A bit surprising, but in the end it resulted in a 2 degrees C difference. Interesting, but that's how it is. Ignoring the apples to cucumber comparison, the max performance result is, is still quite outstanding. 44 degrees C is still up there with the very best. But don't get too excited yet, cause on the noise to performance benchmark, the image changed dramatically. While they still managed to keep up an excellent max performance endpoint, these 140mm high speed light wings are so freaking loud compared to any other light wings that they utterly lose against everything. All of them, the small light wing 120s, the light wing 120 high speeds and the regular 140 light wings. Absolutely everybody beats the crap out of these fans. Very very disappointing. Going into the review, I did believe that uh, I will find some sort of ratio between the 140s and the 140 high speeds, just as we saw with the 120s and 120 high speeds. A bit louder on the end, but the better across the whole line. That's what I expected, but no. This is bad. Even the price conscious P12 can beat it at some point. That's, that's not how it's supposed to be. So no, even though the build quality and design and all of that is still up to be quite standard and I can still stand behind their longevity and you know the, the whole good sort of things, I would definitely advise you to go for the regular Lightwing 140s in a case airflow situation. For radiators, I don't know yet, that's a completely different type of review, but for cases, I would definitely keep my hands away of those and just look at the 140 regulars. A small critique that I do want to point out, however, is the quick confusion created by the high-speed or non-high-speed naming scheme. The problem here is that you would assume that high-speed just means high-speed and nothing else, whereas in reality, the high-speed versions are radiator-optimized versions, static pressure-optimized versions, whereas the non-high-speed versions are for case fan situations. So I believe it would be best to distinguish them with something like Lightwing F for airflow or Lightwing A and Lightwing P for pressure or S for static pressure, whatever, but something to keep them apart. But okay, this should be it for our take on the Be Quiet Lightwing's 140mm high speeds. At this point, a huge thank you to Be Quiet for sending them over. And if you want to keep watching, have a look at one of the other Lightwing reviews. We have a, a ton of them now. On a side note, we now also have channel memberships, so if you are looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but we are also looking for something like a, a body strapped electric shocking device that keeps me awake. Like the first 50-60 hours I can go with something like caffeine, uh, but after that, uh, yeah, I, I need some like mechanical help. It's, I need something more irrefutable, you know? Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.